Once again, good afternoon and welcome. Today, the United States Army, Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, pay a special tribute to Lieutenant General Douglas F. Stitt, Deputy Chief of Staff G-1, who is retiring after 34 years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's review, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Randy Bartell and led by Drum Major Daniel Ord. Elements of the Old Guard include Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain Sean Conaway and led by First Sergeant Jonathan Benton. Next online is Doghouse Company, commanded by Captain Fisher Watkins and led by Staff Sergeant Jeffrey Moore. Next online is Battle Hard Company, commanded by First Lieutenant Nicholas Christensen and led by Sergeant First Class Alex Stuckert. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created in, by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by First Lieutenant Nathan Mapes and led by Sergeant First Class Weston Blakely. The last element online dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform is the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The, women, or the men and women of the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The corps is led today by Drum Major Barrett Newman. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Van Gell, Commander, 4th Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, taking the center of our formation in just a moment and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Staff Sergeant Trevor Kemp. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors. Advance the colors.
Please be seated. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 55 well-earned battle streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 3 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War Department granted permission for the Old Guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The Old Guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum. Sound, fix bayonets! Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Douglas F. Stitt, accompanied by the host, General Randy A. George, Chief of Staff of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation offered by Chaplain, er, Chief of Chaplains Major General William Green. 
bow with me as I ask God's blessings upon this retirement ceremony. Almighty and merciful God, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for Lieutenant General Douglas Stitt, selfless, selfless service and superior leadership to our Army and our nation. Bless our time together today as family, friends, and fellow soldiers, colleagues, and Army leaders join one another in honoring a truly exceptional leader. Lord, you bestowed Lieutenant General Stitt with values, intellect, wisdom, and challenges that forged the consummate leader who stands before us today. And for that, we are grateful. Heavenly Father, we ask that you accept our prayers of thanksgiving for him, his wife Beth, and their daughters Laura and Anna as they begin a new chapter in life. As this wonderful Army family transitions to civilian life, continue to give them strength and wisdom to navigate the exciting days ahead. And Heavenly Father, may they find joy and purpose in this new phase of their life while continuing to be a shining example of service and dedication to others. Grant the Stitts the assurance that their combined service and sacrifice have made our Army and our nation stronger. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Sound off!
Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem. Sir, the persons to be honored and the colors are present. Shoulder, warlocks, and one, and two, and three.
detachment. Order almost. Please be seated. General George and Mrs. George are moving to the floor to honor today's retiree and spouse. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, July 9th, 1918, has awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to Lieutenant General Douglas F. Stitt, United States Army, for exceptionally meritorious service to the government in duties of great responsibility over a 34-year career, culminating as the Deputy Chief of Staff, G1, Headquarters, Department of the Army. Lieutenant General Stitt's commitment to excellence made a profound impact on soldiers, civilians, and families contributing immeasurably to the success and progress of our Army. His exemplary record of selfless service, professionalism, and dedication to the military profession of arms resulted in significant and lasting contributions to the security of the United States. Lieutenant General Stitt's outstanding leadership and performance of duty is in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon him, the office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, G1, and the United States Army. Signed, Christine E. Warmouth, Secretary of the Army. Headquarters Department of the Army Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following general officer is retired, Lieutenant General Douglas F. Stitt. General George is now presenting the United States flag to Lieutenant General Stitt for his faithful service to his country. The Distinguished Public Service Medal is awarded to Beth Bartholomew Stitt for exceptional contributions while serving Army soldiers, civilians, and their families from June 2019 through August 2024. Mrs. Bartholomew Stitt's unwavering commitment and passionate service have made a lasting impact on the lives of many. As a trusted mentor, effective leader, and devoted spouse, her selfless dedication has significantly improved the quality of life in numerous military communities. As a member of the Arlington Ladies, she played a vital role in the bereavement process and provided significant support at the Arlington National Cemetery, providing comfort to care er, and care to families during difficult times. Additionally, she fostered international cooperation by acting as an ambassador during Army counterpart visits. Mrs. Bartholomew Stitt's distinctive accomplishments over 30 years of distinguished volunteer service are a great credit to her, the United States Army, and the nation. Signed, Christine E. Wormuth, Secretary of the Army.
On the occasion of retirement of this distinguished soldier, we also recognize the outstanding service of Mrs. Bar Beth Stitt, who is being presented with the Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation for her faithful and devoted service. It is dedicated support which made possible such a lasting contribution to our nation. Signed, General Randy A. George, Chief of Staff of the Army. At this time, Major General Trevor Bradenkamp and Command Sergeant Major Odero, Commanding General of the Commanding General of the Military District of Washington and Command Sergeant Major Odero will present Lieutenant General Stitt with two infantry awards. In the special interest of regimental continuity, tradition, and esprit de corps, by order of the Secretary of the Army, Lieutenant General Douglas F. Stitt is designated, is designated to be an honorary member of the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Signed, Major General Mont L. Roan, Chief of Infantry. The Order of St. Maurice Award recognizes individuals who have contr contributed significantly to the infantry in ways that stand out in the eyes of the recipient's seniors, subordinates, and peers. These individuals have also demonstrated the highest standards of integrity and moral character, an outstanding degree of professional competence, and have served the United States Army Infantry or the infantry community with distinction appearing before a most jud judicious and discriminating committee of tried and proven army infantrymen and infantry patriots, it is known that Lieutenant General Douglas F. Stitt was tested and found worthy of special recognition. Therefore, on behalf of the Chief of Infantry and the Chairman of the National Infantry Association, Major General Trevor Bradenkamp inducts him into the Honorable Order of St. Maurice for outstanding contributions to the infantry. We are proud to recognize Lieutenant General Stitt and Mrs. Stitt's devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors. Stand. Right. Face.
Please be seated. Pass and review. All guard. Pass in review. Right.
ladies and gentlemen, General George. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? I want to thank everybody uh, for being here. Secretary, Vice, Dr. Schaefer, Dr. Wardensky, General Berto, thanks for making the trip up here. DAS, uh, family and friends. I know there's a whole bunch of our staff uh, teammates. I know the Stitt family really appreciates everybody being here. I'm going to go all the way back, start by going all the way back to 2001 in Vicenza, Italy. That's when we first met, Patty and I first met, Team Stitt. We shared a duplex, which we lovingly called our double wide with Team Stitt. And that first morning after we arrived, and a lot of folks in here have had the long overseas travel, we got a knock on our door, and Beth introduces herself with a fresh pot of coffee in her hand. You remember that, Beth, way long time ago. And it was a wonderful way to welcome us. And really, if you know the Stitts, you wouldn't be a bit surprised that this is how our friendship started out. They lead with kindness, generosity, and a strong sense of community. And if you want to know what makes a great Army family, look at Team Stitt. They set the example. So after meeting Beth and little Laura and baby Anna, yeah, baby Anna, we hadn't even met, met Doug yet. We knew we hit the duplex mate jackpot. I'm not sure what Team Stitt thought about us and our noisy beagle at the time, though. But when I did meet Doug, I was absolutely impressed. He was the epitome of a soldier, an absolute expert at his craft, physically tough, and selfless. I was amazed by Doug's work ethic then, and that man is consistent. His work ethic now 23 years later still impresses me and everybody who knows him. He's not taking his foot off the gas pedal, and we often talk about running through the tape, and Doug Stitt has run through it, leaning forward the whole time. Doug and Beth, it's an honor for Team George and everybody here to pay tribute to you both for all you've done for our Army and for this country. This past week, General Flynn sent this note reflecting on Doug's retirement. It said, Doug is the hardest working and most dedicated HR professional we have in the Army. He brings together a unique perspective tying tightly his operational experiences with the knowledge and wisdom of administrative personnel functions. Pay, leave, promotions, and awards have a direct impact on soldiers and families. If those things are screwed up, it can affect everything else. No one, no one is better at delivering those things for our soldiers and families than Doug Stitt. I'd add that pay, leave, promotions, and awards Awards stir emotions in all of us when things aren't absolutely perfect. And Doug, you've done, brilliantly supported our soldiers and families and done it through some extraordinarily tough times. I think two years of COVID says it all. Nothing was easy then. But to have a successful career in the Army takes more than just the hard work and dedication from an individual soldier. And we've been talking a lot about this here. This is uh, transition season. The Army is a team sport. And we've got a lot of Doug supporters and teammates here today. And the most important team is right up there to Doug's right, my left up there in the front row. And first, Beth. The absolute example of drive, and I would say the heartbeat of the Stitt family. A proud Norwicher, where she played collegiate soccer. Beth is a consummate organizer, but not only does she keep things moving in the right direction, she's also creative and can pull things together in what appears to be an effortless style. She's done this through 14 moves and four deployments and two kids, 
and too many to count volunteer efforts ranging from soldier and family readiness groups, and we all know how much work goes into all of those efforts, Spouses Club fundraising events, a strong and kind presence at Arlington Cemetery as an Arlington lady, a soccer coach, a very good one, I might add, and a volunteer and executive board member of Wear Blue, Run to Remember. She actually started the Fayetteville, North Carolina chapter, and if I'm not mistaken, Beth will continue to champion that cause when she moves on to her next adventure. Beth, we want to thank you for everything that you've done for our soldiers and our families through the years, for being a great neighbor and a great friend, and for instigating, I mean planning, all the neighborhood get-togethers and parties and helping us support the local wine and beer industry around the world. We know your commitment to Doug, Laura, and Anna, and so many Army families through these years has made the Army team much stronger. I'd like a big round of applause for Beth Stick. <laughs> Beth and Doug have two amazing kids. And I'm using kids here because that's how we remember them. Laura, who's a dietitian, married to Peter, an engineer, and they plan to be here. Um, but a baby planned to be here um, today. So we're thankful even to have, we're thankful to have Beth. She's probably going to have about six or eight of those uh, camera tickets waiting for her when she gets back because she just came back down here, was up with uh, Laura, who uh, her and Peter are expecting their first child. But it's particularly hard for Patty and me to believe since Laura will always be that six-year-old running around Villaggio del Pace to us. And Anna, who is here sitting next to Beth, who is an account analyst for federal scheduling. Anna wasn't even walking when we first met her. We feel like we can take full credit, not for the walking, but for her love of dogs. We still talk about a few unexpected visits from Aunt Anna Jojo where we'd find her petting our dog. She's here with Mitchell, who is an engineer at Case New Holland. And they all live in Lancaster, PA, which makes visiting easy. And I know that's a beautiful um, part of the country. So it's great to see everyone here. We've also got Doug's mom here, Janet, who came down from upstate New York. Where are you at, mom? All right. I know you're as proud of Doug as all of us are. Doug's sister, Jennifer, and her husband, Reg, also from New York. Jennifer and Reg both served in the Army. Jennifer as a physical therapist and Reg as a fire support officer in the 197th Sledgehammers. Doug's nephews, Matthew and James, also came out and best parents, Donald and Barbara, all the way up from Sun Sunset Beach, North Carolina, which sounds really nice. And finally, best sister, Jill, and her son, Isaac, uh, also from North Carolina. Again, I appreciate uh, you all being here, and thanks for all that you did to support Team Stitt through the years of deployments um, and moves, everything that you've done to, to help Team Stitt as they've served around the globe. Now for Doug, who's had an incredibly successful Army career. Doug joined the Army to pay for school. That's a familiar story for a lot of us. Uh, went to Norwich University and ended up serving 34 years, rising all the way up to be our Deputy Chief of Staff for personnel. And he certainly had his shares of adventure, adventures along the way. Fort Hood, now Cavazos, Fort Bragg, now Liberty, Vicenza, Fort Knox, along with three deployments to Afghanistan and one to Iraq. Doug served as a battalion commander in the 82nd Airborne, been the Deputy, Pers Deputy of Personnel Operations for Special Operations Command, G1 for the 18th Airborne Corps, Director of the Office of Personnel Management, HRC, and of course, up here at the Pentagon, filling sandbags since 2019 as the Director of Personnel Management and as our Army G1. It's been an incredible career, Doug, and I'd say that there's four traits that really stand out about you 
and why it's a joy uh, to serve with you each and every day. First, Doug, you are an absolute expert. Personnel matters impact people at the fundamental level. And dealing with those things for an organization as big as the Army, with as much internal transition as we have, is an incredible challenge. But Doug knows his craft, works tirelessly to get the job done, and cares about getting it right for each and every soldier that's inside of our formation. Second, Doug is a warfighter, which makes him pretty unique when you think about his peers nationwide. There aren't too many Fortune 500 heads of HR who could gut it, gut it through Ranger School or could at one time run a four minute mile. But that operational experience means Doug understands our Army and the needs of our soldiers. Three, Doug builds teams. And everyone knows how much this means. We've taken on some big challenges the last few years in the Army, transitioned the whole Army to a new HR platform, IPSA. I know that was a piece of cake, Doug. And most recently made major changes to Army force structure, force structure which has rever reverberating personnel impacts across the Army. It's all been hard work for the G1, but Doug has maintained an unflappable attitude, showed genuine care for his team, and ensured that the mission was accomplished. Finally, and we talk a lot about this with leaders, uh, Doug demonstrates personal courage. He's never shied away from what he felt needed to be said, had to be said, and that's made a big impact in our Army. It's certainly made a big impact, Doug, up here in our headquarters, and I know you've been doing that for your entire career, so thank you. Thank you for pouring your heart into making the Army great, for sharing your expertise to make us better, and for building a team that could handle the challenges, both expected and unexpected, that you faced especially over the last couple of years. I know you and Beth have a rough retirement ahead at that beach house in North Carolina. Um, and I did want to remind you that sunburns are dangerous, even for somebody with a brilliant head of hair like you have. Thanks for all that you've done for our Army. Uh, Doug, stay in touch, you and Beth. Um, we really appreciate you. Thank you. This will defend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Stitt. So, um, as the chief indicated, um, in the past 36 hours, the Stitt family has evolved in a very memorable in Army fashion. Um, started at a 3.30 X check. <laughs> the family was prepared. Go bags were packed. Water was broken. <laughs> Water was picked up. <laughs> there was not the golden hour, was not adhered to. There was a two and a half hour non-standard ambulance ride from the National Capital Region to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where my daughter, uh, our soon-to-be granddaughter, and her husband uh, are safe and sound. And so I'm on the shot clock, and I understand that. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, with, with that preface, uh, good afternoon, and, and thank you all for taking the time to be here. Uh, Madam Secretary, Chief, Dr. Schaefer, Secretary Wardinsky, General Brito, fellow general officers, senior executives, soldiers, civilians, friends and family, thank you so much for taking your time to attend this ceremony and honor Beth and I. Uh, we are truly honored and humbled by your presence. Uh, to, the arm, to the soldiers, excuse me, of the old guard and the United States Army Band, thank you so much for your precision, grace, and professionalism to the United States Army protocol team and Gina Finn. I got a chance, you know, to kind of see 
behind the curtain here, and uh, you know these things do not happen without physical presence, willpower, and dedication. So, so thank you all. And uh, if you are not inspired uh, by seeing the great whoas that are out here, um, you need to go check yourself in the mirror and fix your face. <laughs> Chaplain Bill Green, you did it again. Uh, thank you very much for your kind and positive words. I'm, I'm always grateful for your friendship and, and counsel. Madam Secretary, thank you uh, for giving your precious time, uh, your leadership, your guidance, and your support uh, to the Army, uh, and appreciate that. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you for taking your time. Uh, we're grateful for your kind remarks, and your and Patty's friendship has certainly left an indelible remark. Vice appreciates you attending as well. Thank you. Um, I love the Army. I love soldiers. and. Uh, if you're here today, you are now an honorary member of Team Stitt, so thank you very much. I'm a product of the Army. Um, I think I've learned that many times throughout my career uh, through force feedings of the milk of human kindness, repetition, and blunt trauma. And there are several groups of people along the way, and I'm probably going to miss some people, and those are acts of uh, omission on my part, and I apologize up front, but great general officers who have impacted me like McConville, Brito, Flynn, Rainey, Jim Huggins, Paul Chamberlain, Carl, Carl Gingrich, and Uncle Walt Pyatt, their counsel, time, and mixed measures of all the above mean so very much to me, and I thank you all for your friendship and support. To those wise members of the Senior Executive Services who listen, coach, led me, counseled me throughout, and our great friends, Stephanie Miller, Karen Marmot, Roy Wallace, Jeff Angers, Yvette Busico, Dave Paschal, Bob Steinroff, Mike Mahoney, to the great MNRAs who coached and mentored me, Secretary Wardinsky, Secretary Lewis, thank you very much. To Dr. Agnes Schaefer, you are a friend, a confidant, a true patriot. It was a personal honor and a privilege to serve alongside you, ma'am. Beth and I wish you and David all the very, very best. To the Iron Colonels who advanced Army equities and made a huge difference. They are truly in the room where it happens. They often write the history that they are not mentioned in, but our Army and our soldiers would not be the organization that it is without them. Jay Edwards, Jason Riley, Mike McTighe, Chris Luke, Rebecca Lust, Becky Lust, excuse me, Rebecca Eggers, Nicole Curtis, Crystal Blue, Shea O'Neill, the great OEMA team, the Splendid and the Vile, Mark Crow, could talk for days about what you brought to our Army. I cannot thank you all enough for supporting, leading, and guiding. To our great civilians, Russo, Riley, Henkel, Haney, thank you as well. To wonderful warrant officers who set the example for standards, processes, procedures, shy, quiet lot that they are, they have often voice their opinion. Nixon Dixon, Reichsa, Chief Dixon Carter, Hilliard, and some of the awesome, phenomenal NCOs who put fins on the rocket, who set their example each and every day with their professionalism and commitment. Todd Shirley, Linda Kessinger, Derek Johnson, Mark Clark, Kenyatta Gaskin, and, and Smoke. Um, I waited two years for you, brother and it was well worth the wait. You are a teammate, a confidant, and I love coming in every day to serve alongside the New York Yankees' greatest fan. To our wonderful G1 team at ARI, Tabai, Chara, DMPM, HRC, AG1CP, and TIOH, a veritable acronym soup, but every day you work hard and do things that are just truly awesome for our Army. It was truly an honor and a privilege to serve alongside all of you. To the greatness that resides within our Army HR enterprise, Rampy, McManus, Johnson, Walkowitz, Starworth, Smith, go for it. Drive transformation for the best outcomes for our soldiers and our families. To our allies and partners, the Wrights, the Altmyers, the Skellies, the Coots, the Johnsons, from all around the globe who we met in some less than desirable places, and some really great times. Thank you all 
for being there for Beth and I and becoming great friends over the miles. Teams within a team, Ordonio, Abel, C.J. Jones, Whittington, Riccatello, you made it all happen. Sacrificed yourselves effortlessly, professionally. I learned so much about you, from you, and alongside you, and I'm again honored to serve alongside you. To the 31 May commissioning crew, Vanjie Roselle and Judy Yu, a couple of years between us, but thank you so much for all that you did during a couple of very tumultuous years. You made a huge, huge difference. Beth and I can never repay that debt, and you are friends for life. To the great patriots here on the Army staff, Patrick and Jackie Matlock, John and Ann Morrison, Stu and Cindy Reich, Chris and Kathy Norrie, Hank and Kristen Taylor, Beth and I are all better people having known all of you. Thank you for your laughter, your candor, and most of all, your friendship. Lisa Hallett, thank you for your devotion and commitment to all of our Gold Star families. You honor the service and sacrifice of the American military with all that you do. You came into Beth and R's lives at a bit of an inflection point, and your friendship and kindness means an awful lot to Beth and I. To those people that knew you when you were you, Tom and Melissa Siemens, Pat and Maureen Donahue, Bill and Paula Troy, who overlooked a young lieutenant and his wife who brought dessert to your home and said, here are the fresh baked chips ahoy and the six pack. <laughs> Please enjoy. Tim and Susie McGuire, Dan and Beth McKay, Beth McKay who came down here this morning from Manchester, New Hampshire because we were on a game time decision and said, get out of the way, Doug. I'm gonna set up for the promotion, or the retirement party and Thank you so much. John and Ethel Lang, our own very awesome virtual health nurse from back in Vicenza who was giving us uh, professional development advice on trying to coach uh, Laura to the finish line. Thank you so very much. Scott and Risa Deutsch from way back in the day at, at Fort Bragg and Fort Liberty. To mom, thank you for instilling in me hard work, dedication, and commitment. I love you. You've always been there. Thank you so much. Don and Barb, we'll see you in 21 days. We love you. We look forward to being your part-time neighbors. Jill and Isaac, thank you so much for coming. The commute to Wilmington, not too bad from our next locale. You are going to have to teach me how to play golf. Tim and Wendy Hoy, we're excited to be a distaff part of the family, and we look forward to sharing our new arrival with you. To Jenna Reg, my big sister and brother-in-law, who blazed the trail from upstate New York into the Army, you were there from the very beginning for Beth and I, and we are very much looking forward to the first Tour de Pub bike ride in central Vermont. I'm not going to sleep in the back of the element. Matthew and James, you're here. This is awesome. And uh, you have both become such great young men that you are today. Laura, Pete, Anna, and Mitchell, uh, I love you all so very, very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you could just give me a round of applause, some positive vibes or a shout out to my daughter. I think she's trying to watch. I don't know what your words of encouragement are, but it's time to cut sling load and, and make the drop. So who? Cool. <laughs> Anna and Mitchell, we're, we're just inspired by what you do every day. And uh, thank you so much, Anna, for being there while mom was gone and you jumped right into the clutch, and uh, yes, you, you almost had first chair today, but uh, your, your day's coming. <laughs> Mitchell, you keep working hard, man. Like two years ago, you were like an afterthought. Now you're on the front page of the program, brother. <laughs> it's working out pretty well for you. Um, but Lauren and Pete, we're thinking about you, and, and TBD hoy, ahoy hoy. We're looking forward to it. Um, a lot was really said here. Some of it was remotely true but being your father is the best title that I could ever have. And I love you, thank you. Beth Joy, holy cow, here we are. Game time decision, you walk down to the field like without a hair, out of place, makeup on, no sweat. You made it to be together. Um, and that was a you decision. And it has been you decisions along the way that have made us who we are, that have made me a better man, a better person. And boy, I really love you. 
So thank you so very, very much. I look forward to the next chapter. Um, my dad was a bit of an old movie buff, so I apologize um, if I can't evoke uh, the proper uh, John Gielgud or James Mason discourse from Julius Caesar, and there was a quote in that movie that uh, I wrote down on a three by five card, and I said, you know, someday I'm gonna say this someplace. And my mom got mad because my penmanship is as it was, not very good, and she typed it up, and I had it thumbtacked to my desk uh, for a long time at 817 J Street. And uh, it goes something like this, and it says, if a man were to know the end of this day's business, ere it come, it suffices that the day will end and the end be known. And if we meet again, we'll smile. And if not, why then this parting was well made. I love you all, I love the Army, I love my family, defend and serve, this will defend. Gentlemen, the Army Song.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain in place until the departure of the official party. You are welcome to join Lieutenant General Stitt and his family in the receiving line taking place on the floor to your front. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.